Hey, it's Leah Ray with Digital Trailblazer, and welcome to the Digital Trailblazer podcast bonus success path episodes. This is where we feature up and coming online entrepreneurs and see how they're beginning their journey and walk with them through their first steps of building and growing a successful online business from the start. So in today's episode, we have with us Leslie Stevens. So welcome, Leslie. Super excited to have you with us today. Go ahead, introduce yourself and let our audience know all about you. Absolutely. Thank you so much having, for having me, Leah. I am Leslie Stevens, and I'm a branding and marketing strategist, but I really specialize in helping people who provide any type of one-to-one or group services make more sales without depending on social media. So we take a little bit of a different perspective than we see every day, and we really focus on having more conversations that convert and making strategic collaborations so that they can build their business without that pressure to be posting and constantly creating content every single day. It's interesting. So what does that look like? Because I'm I'm all about the marketing stuff. That's what we do here, right? So um, yeah, what does that look like from a practical perspective? So practically, there are so many different marketing strategies that we have that it's about finding the strategies that work best for you and your business. Mm-hmm. So these could be things from networking in many different types of way. It could be virtual, coffee chats. It could be in person. It could be doing things like podcasting is how I actually network with my guests And you also find ways to borrow other people's audiences. So instead of focusing on building your audience first, you're actually borrowing other people's audiences, allowing yourself to book in clients, and then building your audience on the back end. So we do things a little bit opposite, but this could be in guest trainings, getting yourself featured in their newsletters, blog posts content collaboration, so many different types of things you can do with this. It's just realizing you have so many more marketing tools in your toolbox than just posting and praying that you'll get a client from that post. Right. That is not a good strategy in general that we would recommend is, you know, just posting content and hoping that it'll lead to a sale. Um, I love borrowing other people's audiences. We've done this for years, even back in the affiliate marketing days and, and different things, we would do launches with people and, and borrow each other's audience to launch our new products. Um, a dear, um, a former uh, client turned dear friend of, of ours, Adrian Hill, is an expert on summits. And so she mm-hmm. teaches this very, like, this is her, her expertise, just summits. And she crushes it. I've never run one, but I will tell you, I'm in them all the time because I always make sales from them because mm-hmm. people go in, they're red hot. I always really perform in my section, right? When I when I give my talk or, or whatever it is that we're doing. And so I attract the people who are interested in specifically my stuff. They opt in. I generate a bunch of leads and I definitely get really warm uh, prospects who turn into sales. So collaborations are really powerful. And I think people um, underestimate them uh, as a, a strategic tool. I'm at probably a, a summit a month minimum, Mm -hmm. like plus then there's giveaways that people do and all we get contacted all the time. Um, So it's really cool. Now we're at the stage that we get contacted to be doing this, but I'm curious what tips you have for people who are just getting started and aren't being reached out to, to, to join in on these types of collaborations. How do they initiate this process? Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you exactly how I do it. Cause I, I do the same thing. I mean, at least one summit a month, there was one time I was in like three summits at once, obviously spacing them out strategically, but I was like, oh, we need to back up a little bit. But there are so many opportunities. You just have to look for them. And Mm -hmm. Facebook groups are a goldmine of opportunities because people are posting them all the time. Get yourself in groups where people who put on summits are there. Just put yourself in the position to even look for them, Google them, like use your resources. We are not limited. Sometimes we think, oh, there are no summit opportunities. There are no speaking opportunities. There are no clients out there. And we get so caught up in this mindset and we have to kind of stop waiting for all of these things to come to us and go out there and look for them. You can look on different platforms. You can become a part of networking communities. There are just never ending options. Mm -hmm. I also think that can also get overwhelming. 
So finding a place that you're comfortable in first, like if you're on Facebook, go into Facebook groups. If you're comfortable on LinkedIn, go in LinkedIn groups. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable on forums like Reddit or even just Googling things, see like what summits are coming up. Oh, I have an expertise that I could add value to this summit or this event that's coming up and apply for it. Reach out. That's good. So what happens? Because I know uh, the summits that I get invited to, at least, they all have l- list requirements. So mm-hmm. that you must have a list of at least 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 people. So for us, that's not an issue. But for someone just getting started, that's an issue. So what do you recommend for those folks? So there are actually a few times I've run into this issue at the beginning when my list mm-hmm. wasn't up to yeah. the recommendations. And I'm actually glad because it allowed me that opportunity to help people with just this issue. And a lot of summits are great where mm-hmm. they will still allow you to come in for smaller contributions to the summit or a different way to get involved for, of course, promotional investments and giving your freebie and all types of value, things like that. So Mm -hmm. a lot of them do that. A lot of them may say no and just realizing that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like at this point in your business, that's okay. Some people are going to say no, and that doesn't mean you're not going to get accepted. Another way is to make your value to their summit so clear that they want to include you that they want you to be a part of it. So just showing them what they can get out of it if they include you, show them that you can be of an incredible value. And yes, you're just in the beginning steps and honoring that and not trying to make something up and be like, oh yeah, I do have that list size or like I can do that. It's like, hey, be honest. The people who run these summits have started a business as well. They're going to realize what their business can do. Can they include you? Can they put the time and the energy and effort to also put you in there? Will they think it's worth it? Or are you not making your value clear enough? Or maybe you're just not the right fit. And that's totally fine. But allowing yourself to be in the position to, I don't want to say fail more, but to get more no's, you'll also get more yeses. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some things that people should look at when they're evaluating whether a collaboration is worth it? Because I will admit that there have (laughs) been times that I've been duped into doing something where someone said they had this big following or or done something. And in reality, like no one was watching the stuff they were putting out and it was a total waste of my time. So how do you avoid that? How do you make sure it's going to be a good use of your time to do these collaborations? Definitely do your research. Mm -hmm. I have been in the same position before where I'm like, this is fantastic opportunity. And I'm like, oh, wow, did I just get scammed? (laughs) But but that's not true. I think you learn something from every opportunity, even if it doesn't work out exactly the way that you think it should have. But definitely do your research. See if their values really align with what you do, because that's going to give you a good insight on their integrity. Because integrity is very important to me, but you have to be able to show me that you practice what you preach, that you are doing the things that you say you're going to do. And that is going to allow me to trust you and be like, yes, I would love to collaborate with you and see how this could work out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and I would second it and say to um to do a little bit of research on wherever their previous content, their previous collaborations and see how many views and things else they get. Because Mm -hmm. um, we previously used a a service that connected us with folks. And um, a lot of people, I think, lied about how many, how big their reach was. And so, oh yeah, they got a good reach. All it worth my time. And, And in reality, not the case. Like yeah. no one ever saw that interview or their mom did. Right. So um, making sure that you really vet people, obviously. is One thing. Is, yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I really want to add is, especially if you're getting started, you don't necessarily need to collaborate with people with these giant audiences. You can get incredible connections and get into the right communities and get paying clients from small groups, people with really small and engaged audiences. Sometimes that can give you the best outcome. So it's not 
always about that huge reach, which at different stages of your business, you're definitely going to want that. But respecting where you're at in business, if you have a small audience, if you have a small reach, maybe collaborating with a complimentary business who also has a small community, but they are bought in to what that person is doing. That is a great place to start to build. Absolutely. And I would much rather, as someone doing something for the very first time, I would much rather do it on a small stage than a giant <laughs> stage. Let's just put that out there for everybody. So. Absolutely. <laughs> So that's like when we we teach like going like doing live video, recorded video, doing webinars. People are like, well, what if no one shows up? I'm like, good, because you're probably gonna suck the first few times. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a terrible thing. Yeah. I would rather get through the sucky part when there's a small audience and then get really good by the time there's a big audience. So I think that's that's so true. So I like that. So um, how are you currently bringing on your clients these days? Yeah, right now I really do. I do a lot of summits. I do a lot of speaking opportunities. I also guest in a lot of courses and do small trainings within like certification groups or masterminds, things like that. So I'm really just doubling down on those collaborations because I genuinely enjoy it. And it's enabled me to grow very, very quickly and in a way that I don't feel any resistance to. Like, I just feel like I'm getting to talk to people and not Mm -hmm. trying to always worry about, oh, what content do I need to create? Am I saying the right thing? Is my message coming across? Maybe I get a client from that. It's really, truly for me, building my business in this authentic way that that feels easy. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So what do you feel like is your next stage for you? Like, where do you plan to take it from here? Yeah, so I'm working on building a community to complement the course because the course I've created is all about collaboration and having more conversations. And I want to build this community where people all with all in one space are already set up to have these collaborations, learn how to communicate together and realize they're in the same place of business. And this is a safe place for them to learn and grow their skills and then put it out in the world so that they can grow their business confidently. That's awesome. So would it be a low ticket membership? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. So say if you're not charged for that, you should charge for that. <laughs> <laughs> No, yes. I think that's awesome. Uh, a tip with that, and and for really most, a lot of people who are doing a course or, or a main offering and also have a membership, is to set this up as a bonus. You get a as part of the course, you get the first month bonus in the membership, right? And so they and they can cancel after that if they don't want to continue, but it naturally rolls them into the ongoing membership. So they get that taste for free. They feel that added value, which everyone loves free stuff. Um, but then it also helps to really fill up that that membership and get much more higher lifetime value, um, customer value from people. It, it allows you to have more for ad spend and everything else. So that's awesome. Have you thought about getting into paid ads or doing something like that? I have definitely thought about it. I have tried it a little bit, but I was actually on maternity leave for a little while. And then I have come back and I'm going full force. I've just added more content to my course and I'm really refining my messaging before I go back into paid ads, seeing, testing, connecting with people to see what's really working and Mm -hmm. then going more into the paid ads as I scale. Yeah, I, I we love paid ads. We help a lot of clients with it. Um, yeah, making sure that your messaging is really on point and that your sales systems are really dialed in. Do you do sales calls or do you have a sales webinar or BSL that that is uh, closes for you? Yeah, so I do both. I okay. have an evergreen webinar, and then I, mm-hmm. I also do offer sales calls as bonuses on the back of some of the collaborations that I do. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So that. It depends on whatever I was talking to them about during the collaboration. Then I'll have a sales call or um, just a conversation with them afterwards to see if we're the right fit. And those both convert pretty well for me. Okay, that's awesome. So yeah, if you know, making sure that the like say this the webinar evergreen webinar, making that sure that's really dialed in. Do you have a free Facebook group? I do not have a free Facebook group. Take some notes. Okay, so (laughs) running. 
<laughs> running a face ad to a free um like collaborations cheat sheet like the five ways to get in front of someone else's audience or, or like whatever right so you got a good freebie on the thank you page invite them to join your free facebook group so now they're on your email list also ask for phone numbers so you can text them um so but invite them to your free facebook group this is a lead gen group it's where you nurture people you obviously we want to nurture in email lists but in reality you get them so much hotter, so much faster in a, in a community, in a Facebook group where you can do live video. You're going to do a live video at least once a week where you're inviting them to a call or to your free training, which is your webinar. Okay. And so you're booking sales, you're doing sales calls, you're, you're getting sales out of your group, but you're building this really powerful asset, your own community that you can do more collaborations with, all that kind of stuff. Um, many, many value points there. But it just warms them up so much faster than simply an email list. And so, mm -hmm. you know, from there, you can get them on the webinar. You can do all these different things. Um, but, you know, like, it's gold. So, mm -hmm. and it'll be really good. Okay. Note it. <laughs> <laughs> Got my notes. <laughs> okay, awesome. Awesome. So if people are really interested in what you do and want to learn more about collaborations, how do they find you? Absolutely. So you can go to clientconnectionmethod.com and that's where you'll find everything you need to know about me, all the free resources, my link to my podcast, anything like that. And always feel free to reach out, send me a message and have a conversation. Awesome. And so she's, you've got some freebies there, right? So yep. you want to Tell them about a juicy one and entice them to come over. Absolutely. So I have a free training. It's 15 minute short free training that is on demand where you can learn my three step signature client connection method, taking strangers to paying clients quickly and easily without depending on social media. Yay. I love it. So make sure you grab that. I'll have the links um, that she listed. I'll have them above or below this video, depending on where you're watching this, somewhere in the description. This has been so much fun. Thanks for being on, Leslie. Thanks so much.